Today, Thorpe Park released the official opening date for the Ghost Train at Thorpe Park Resort. And today, in this video, we're going to be breaking down and sort of speculating what we can expect to see within this brand new attraction. And after ages of waiting, we are finally here, the day where we've been given the official opening date for the Ghost Train at Thorpe Park. Obviously, we've known for a while that this ride is going to be rethemed from Derren Brown's Ghost Train to Ghost Train. I keep saying the Ghost Train, but it is Ghost Train. Um, so yeah, we have been waiting quite a while. It was announced back late winter, early spring that this ride was going to be rethemed. Obviously, as we all know, from 2016 onwards, it was Derren Brown's Ghost Train. And then 2017 was Derren Brown's Ghost Train Rise of the Demon. And then obviously up to last season, at the end of it, they closed it. We weren't aware that it would be the last ride that you could get on it. But obviously, from the end of winter, start of um, spring, we have known that this ride is going to be refurbished into Ghost Train. And it's really nice to see that Thorpe Park haven't gone down the IP route again. Obviously, IP, intellectual property. When you look at things like the Bubble Works, that was changed to the Gruffalo. Um, so yeah, when, when you talk IPs, it's things like that. Whilst Darren Brown isn't really uh, a sort of story or like a, like the Gruffalo, I'm trying to go along the lines of that just to sort of uh, explain what it, what's in my head. Um, it's still like a brand and so it's it's an intellectual property that they brought in and they themed the ride to it so yeah it's nice to see that Merlin have gone down their own route uh, with this an original idea um, and it's really nice to see that they've gone that way um, in terms of the ride system we're not too sure if it's going to be staying the same well I think we're not too sure I don't I, from what Thor Park have announced there's there's no sort of indication that the ride system may have changed obviously no sort of track system or anything from what as we know has been delivered to Thorpe Park so I'm assuming the ride system is going to stay the same however obviously the VR sort of aspect of things that's changed because as Thorpe Park announced on their social media pages and website is that there's nothing virtual about this petrifying experience so prepare to meet your maker as you come face to face with horrors that dwell within. So yeah, as we can sort of, you know, dilute from that is that there's not going to be any sort of virtual reality aspect to the ride anymore. I can see it going down more the sort of screen route, projection mapping, you know, your typical dark ride. But as they've said, is that it's a next generation of Ghost Train. So... Obviously, Ghost Train, you think of like Blackpool Pleasure Beach or the Curse at Alter Manor. That was a sort of like a Ghost Train dark ride sort of thing. But seeing as it's a new generation of Ghost Train, we're not too sure what that means. So I, I sort of come, like sort of thought that maybe it's going to be down the screen route. So obviously, when you're on the train ride system, you obviously have the sort of windows which were just, I think they were just filled in. I'm not sure if there was anything on the windows or, I think there were windows in the ride system, but I'm not too sure what was filling them. Um, because obviously you had the VR headsets, so there was no need to theme them that much. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm sort of assuming that they're gonna be like screens in the windows. And as the car like vehicle moves through what it did do with Down Brown, it is going to be just sort of you're watching it on the screen. And I think with that, it's going to help. Um, it's going to be more reliable in that sense, because obviously the VR always sort of had issues. Not every headset was working at audio glitches. So I feel like if they've got a surround, a surround sound speaker system in the in the carriage, they're playing that and also watching the screens go. I feel like there's less chance of a ride breakdown or effects not working as when you do get those sort of things, it really does ruin the immersion. So I think that's why they sort of did this. Obviously, I think their um, contract with Darren Brown may have been coming to a close. So they maybe decided not to renew it and go down this route just to see if it would be a bit more reliable. And I think it will be. Um, obviously, they've also said that this experience is actor led. Now, we know from the official opening date, which is the 26th of May, just had to double check there, didn't want to give you the wrong information, Friday the 26th of May, uh, and it's going to be opening every day from 12pm. Now, 
my sort of take from this is that it's because it's an actor led experience. That's why it's the 12 p.m. start. So it's not like start of the day, you can run down there and join the queue for the first ride of the day. I mean, you can do, but just at 12 o'clock because it won't be open when the park opens at 10. So you'll have all the other coasters to do and then you can head on to Ghost Train. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's probably not the greatest that they haven't got it open the whole day as, you know, maybe some people have less chance to ride it if the queues are long, which with opening day, I feel like it's gonna be quite busy with that ride. Um, so yeah, they've sort of cut down the day a bit with it, but I can completely understand if it's down to the um, sort of actor led experience because uh, things like the scare mazes and things like that, they don't open till the afternoon at Fright Nights because they're all actor led experiences. Um, and they need to have a certain amount of actors uh, to be able to fulfill that experience with them being able to take lunches and breaks and things like that. So yeah, they need to have that sort of balance. So if it's just those two hours, it's not too bad in the grand scheme of things. But yeah, so in, in the story itself, well, obviously we've got uh, the promotional art. So that's the only thing we can really, really go off um, when it's sort of coming to the this, this story aspect of things. We've obviously got things like uh, the facade of the building. Now, the majority of it has stayed the same. However, the queue line and the bottom part of the uh, sort of our exterior building, let's say, uh, has all changed. Obviously, you've got the white blue colours, light blue and dark blue. I'll put pictures up on the screen for you so you can sort of uh, get an idea of what I'm saying. Most, most of you might have uh, seen the images already, but just if you haven't, just to refresh your minds, I'll just put them up on the screen. You've also got images of the posters that have gone up, which have got some nice Easter eggs uh, to past attractions. There's one like um, Logger's Leap. I think there's a Logger's Leap poster with like the original promotional art on there, which is really nice. Canada Creek Railway, things like that. Uh, just, you know, a bit of Thought Park history, which is nice. But um, yeah, sort of going off the promotional images, we've obviously got the, the main image, which has been around for a few months now of this sort of, demon looking creature hooded figure with these blue glowing eyes over this train and it looks like it's got some sort of electric powers that's sort of that's sort of the gist of it uh, obviously there's a picture up on the screen and you can sort of see what i'm talking about and there's like sparks coming off the tracks and i'm not too sure maybe this could be a nod to the uh train jump scare scene that was back in durham brown i know they took that out so it could be a nod towards that, maybe. Uh, we'll, we just have to wait and see. And then the new one, which they released today of the concept art, is, um, well, I say concept art, it's more promotional images now, isn't it? Because it's not a concept. Well, I don't know how that sort of fits in. But anyway, the promotional image uh, that they released today um, shows the train door sort of open with like the demon figure whatever you call it the the grim reaper that's it the grim reaper with a uh, scythe axe and it's looking out i'm looking at the image here and you can i'll put it up on the screen but it's looking out to like a graveyard area so maybe what i'm interpreting from that is that on Darren brown you went from the victorian floating carriage in the where you got on the ride and then you went through some sort of scenes on the VR, and then you got off at like this traditional, not traditional, but modern London tube station. Perhaps this is where you get off at a graveyard, maybe. That's what I'm sort of taking from it, because you have got quite a bit of space to work with when you've got that whole walkway area where that was the um, sort of um, motion area for you to walk through. That was the sort of experience side of things rather than sitting down with the VR. Um, so you have got all that space to work with. Maybe you're gonna be walking through a graveyard. Not too sure with that one. Um, but obviously if you look at the train carriage as well, maybe that's a hint to what it's gonna look like inside. Maybe they're gonna make it look a lot more grimy and moldy. And you never know, maybe with the Victorian floating carriage, maybe that's gonna go. You never know, do you? Because it, um, yeah, 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 I'm not just not too sure because we, we won't know what's on the ride until we actually get inside because obviously it's an enclosed building. You won't know until you're actually on the ride. So 
maybe they're, it's a different type of train. I'm not too sure with that one really, so I can't really give you any sort of information on that uh, because I myself am not too sure. But yeah, we can sort of see it looks a bit more grimy inside, so I'd assume that maybe is what they're going for. I actually thinking about it, obviously you've got some sort of graffiti things and that in there. Maybe you go into the show building and it's like a station and it's like some sort of abandoned train station and then there's it's like this this train that's been graffitied on and things like that. I feel like that's sort of a Thought Park style ride. Um because obviously they've got like their graffiti mural and things like that. I feel like that's sort of something they might go down to sort of um, continue that theme with inside the building. Um, but yeah, you know, you never know. It'll just be exciting to see what happens when it comes to opening day. I myself, I'm going to try and get there for opening day. Not too sure if I can, but I really am going to try because I'd love to be there for opening day. It'd be lovely. Um, final thing to say, that's the last thing I'm looking to say. I'm looking at their sort of website as well. Um, they've said, obviously with Darren Brown, within the last few years from COVID and onwards, they had the uh, time ticket system where you book an online ticket on the app and then you rock up to the attraction uh, sort of when that time ticket, it was a bit like Disney where you have the virtual queues. It was like that and you sort of rocked up at the attraction when your time was. With this, they have said that there is going to be a live queue board on the outside of the attraction and the app. So we can take from that that virtual queuing won't be a thing and that you actually do queue up in the queue line because it, it would make sense, wouldn't it? And we sort of assumed that would be the case after them doing up the queue line and painting it. They could have made it a bigger sort of show building and had more of an actor-led experience in there. But, you, you know, they, they've, got, they've gone down the queue line route. And I do like the queue line route, but also at the same time, it's quite nice to book in a time slot, isn't it? Because then you can go off and do other rides while also doing this, uh, while also waiting for this. But actually, when I think about it, it will um, help capacity with other rides and split people up. So, um, yeah, overall, I'm really excited for this. I don't know what to expect because we can only go off promotional images. I think it's going to be really good. If you look at the likes of Cursor Auto Manor, which I'm doing for the first time this weekend. I have not seen spoilers for it. Nothing at all. I wanted to keep it spoiler free and I'm going in with an open mind and sort of listening. To, I've listened to reviews. People have said it's really good. So I'm looking forward to doing it. Um, and if and they said it's really good standard. So I'm just I'm just taking from that that Merlin doing this with Thorpe Park. I feel like this is going to be a really good attraction. So, yeah, that is pretty much it for Ghost Train at Thorpe Park. I'm looking forward to it. Let me know your thoughts to it in the comment section below because I'd love to know what you all think to it. And yeah, that is everything for this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. I know it has been a while since I've uploaded, but it's, it's feeling great just sitting back down, talking to you all. I probably have waffled on a bit. I do that in videos, so excuse me for doing that. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. If you want to see the opening day vlog, not promising it, but it's looking likely that we will be there. Subscribe, and if you want to see my first reactions to the Curse at Autumn Manor and just my day visit up to Autumn Towers this weekend, subscribe, leave a like, uh, just so I know that if you like these sort of videos, uh, and then turn on notifications so you don't miss these upcoming videos. But yeah, thank you everyone for tuning in. Lovely been doing the videos again, and there's more coming your way. So stay tuned, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye-bye.